Joe Biden is building a wall. Yes, you heard that correct. Joe Biden building a wall. The Biden administration says it is using executive power to allow border wall construction in Texas. The Biden administration announced they waived 26 federal laws in South Texas to allow border wall construction on Wednesday, marking the administration's first use of sweeping executive power to pave the way for building more border barriers. Waived 26 federal laws. That's important. A tactic used often during the Trump presidency. The Department of Homeland Security posted the announcement on the U.S. Federal Registry with few details outlining the construction in Starr County, Texas, which is part of a busy border uh, patrol sector seeing high illegal entry. According to government data, about 245,000 illegal entries have been recorded in this region during the current fiscal year. There is presently an acute and immediate need to construct physical barriers and roads in the vicinity of the border of the United States in order to prevent unlawful entries into the United States in the project areas, Alejandro Mayorkas, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary, stated in the notice. There is presently an acute and immediate need to construct physical barriers. The Clean Air Act... Safe Drinking Water Act and Endangered Species Act were some of the federal laws waived by DHS to make way for construction that will use funds from a congressional appropriation in 2019 for border wall construction. The waivers avoid time-consuming reviews and lawsuits challenging violation of environmental laws. So part of the so a few of the laws that they waived were the Clean Air Act, Safe Drinking Water Act, Endangered Species Act. Later in the article. Environmental advocates say structures will run through public lands, habitats of endangered plants and animal species like the ocelot, a wild uh, spotted cat. A plan to build a wall uh, through will bulldoze an impermeable barrier uh, straight through the heart of that habitat. It will stop wildlife migrations dead in their tracks. It will destroy a huge amount of wildlife refuge land. Uh, I'm sorry, r- refuge land. And it's a horrific step backwards for the borderlands, like in Jordal, a Southwest conservation advocate for the Center of Biological Diversity, said on Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, there was a great film um, that came out a few years ago called The River and the Wall. One of the first episodes I ever did for this show back when we were just an audio podcast, I interviewed someone who was featured in that film. Makes a really interesting point about these border walls really disrupting ecosystems, especially in a desert environment, because you put a wall between a land animal and the Rio Grande, um, that animal is not going to be able to drink any water because you're in the middle of the desert. Right, it's not like there's right, another right. body of water that they right. can go drink from. Like, you know, right. that is an oasis of life in that area. And so you build a wall and you stop, you know, an armadillo or whatever from getting to that uh, water. Uh, that animal is going to die off, which is, of course, you know, uh, a negative in its own sense if you're an animal lover as I am. But it also disrupts ecosystems. It is an yeah. environmental uh disruption that we don't think about knowing biden though given how fucking stupid and brain fried he is he'll probably put a staircase on the wall for the animals you know (laughs) and just say this is this is only for animals to get to the river to drink imagine they build a wall and they build a staircase over it. that's something that his team would do build a build a rube goldberg contraction contraction. (laughs) yeah exactly it's only it's animals that are smart enough to figure out how to scale it right deserve to live Exactly. So here's here's the the main thing here now. The DHS decision on Wednesday contrasts the Biden administration's posturing when a proclamation to end construction on January 20th, 2021, which was Inauguration Day for Joe Biden, stated building a massive wall that spans the entire southern border is not a serious policy solution. So Biden is maintaining that his hand is being forced here. And he had Corrine uh, Jean-Pierre go out and try and sell that to the press corps. Here she is fielding some questions about this. The president just told me that a border wall does not work. If that's the case, why does his own Department of Homeland Security secretary say in a public notice, quote, there is presently an acute and immediate need to construct physical barriers? Here's what I can say. I can speak to what the president was very clear in saying and also what you all have been reporting about, uh, about this uh, uh, this construction. Uh, so the facts are this. Uh, this, uh, this is not new. Uh, these funds were appropriated in fiscal year 2019 under Republican leadership, and DHS 
IRS is required by law to use the funds for appropriate appropriated purpose. That's what we're seeing. This was announced back in June by the DHS. And so, look, we, we believe that there are better effective ways of moving forward to secure our border and security, we, our border security, and we have continuously asked for Congress uh, to act, uh, to provide our CBP, uh, the law enforcement, uh, law enforcement at the border, uh, to give them the resources they need to do their jobs. You have continually asked for Congress's support starting when? Starting when the Republicans took over Congress so that you can blame them for not giving you the support that you need? Because don't forget, January 20th, 2021, when Biden took office, he did so with a majority in both chambers. And so what do you mean you've, you've been asking for Congress to give you the resources that you need to do this the smart way? No, you haven't. Or at least not since the Republicans took over, apparently, because now you're complaining that you have no choice but to build this wall here. Well, let this go a little more. And so we're going to continue to call on Congress. We believe, and the president has been very clear, even when you asked him, does a, does a border wall work? He said no. Uh, and he's been very consistent about that. We believe that we need uh, border technology that is modernized and land ports of, uh, at, uh, at, of land ports of entry. And that's what we want to see. And that's what I can speak to. And uh, we, this is something that we were required by law and we are complying. This is an administration that does believe in the rule of law. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. I, I haven't, I, I haven't They believe seen... in the rule of law, which is why they're waiving 26 environmental laws to do this. Uh, well, that, that's, that's another great point. Um, I, I haven't seen her at work in a while. Um, yeah, she's really grown into the job because that was really a masterclass in word salad while within that word salad, she managed to touch on these, uh, shit lib talking points that will only make sense to the kind of people who still think Joe Biden is a, is a good idea. Um, which, you know, MSNBC people, we believe in the rule of law, you know, that, that parliamentarian shit goes a long way with those people. Right. Right. And so, so this whole lie, I mean, it's just a lie that their hands are tied. I mean, if your hands are tied, why are you waving 26 federal laws to do it? Clearly, right. clearly applying those laws, you could gum it up. Even if what you're saying is true, that this is your hands are tied by an act of Congress or some bill, which uh, it's, that's unclear. I, I, I don't think that's true or entirely true. Um, obviously, you could just stop it by throwing all these regulations at it, right? But you're not doing that. Um, but, you know, I'm, I promise you, you talk to a lib and, um, you know, I mean, they bought the whole parliamentarian thing. You ever, you, ever, you ever tell a lib about the minimum wage? They will bring that up to you because they got they got that so drilled into their head from their media. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, here's how you know that uh, they're not being truthful about this, because had they been even remotely honest about this, uh, they wouldn't be getting pushback uh, from fellow Democrats, especially not pushback from Beto O'Rourke who challenged him on this. I mean, when even Beto is giving you a hard time, you know that you have a paper-thin argument here. One, walls don't work. Two, President Biden promised he wouldn't build them. Three, now it's even harder for voters to distinguish between him and Trump on border and immigration. And four, this is a wasted opportunity to use executive power to actually fix our asylum system instead of impotent political posturing. I want to go back to item number three there. Now it's even harder for voters to distinguish between him and Trump on border immigration. The reason it's hard for voters to distinguish between Biden and Trump on immigration is because there's not much difference between Biden and Trump on immigration. The only difference is Biden postures more humanely so more immigrants come and creates more chaos when he can't treat them as humanely as his rhetoric would suggest. That's really the only difference. The only difference in how we handle immigration is how we as a society choose to emotionally process how we deal That's it. That's with immigration. It. Trump's policies were a continuation of Obama's, right. and Biden's policies are a continuation of Trump's. Exactly. There, there's not a lot of difference between the three. Right. And when I say it's a matter of emotional processing, I mean under Obama— we feel really terrible that we can't let all the immigrants in. Oh, isn't that a shame? Mm -hmm. Under Trump, it's, no, this is our country. We build a wall. We keep the ones out that we don't want coming in. We kick the ones out who are here and who shouldn't be here, right? Now, under Biden, it's back to, uh, you know, 
They sent Kamala Harris down to Guatemala. Do not come. Do not come. Please. We can't. It's all just how you choose to emotionally process the inescapable reality of neoliberalism, which is that it requires draconian border enforcement. It requires closed borders because these are the only checks on capitalism that we are willing to actually implement, right? Um, you could you could tweak capitalism in a way that empowers ordinary people, or you can tweak it in a way that limits the population so that there's fewer resources to be spread amongst uh, a larger group of people in an open borders situation. That's the problem. And of course, Democrats um, are no more willing to confront capitalism at the end of the day than their Republican counterparts. And so you're going to have basically more or less the same border policy because the math remains more or less the same. You have austerity, you have people competing for limited resources. The more people are here to compete for those limited resources, the lower the quality of life for the average right. person. That is right. an inescapable calculation absent broader reform. Once again, I am not right. advocating for closing the borders and, you know, uh, you know, continuing to perpetrate this austerity politics. What I'm saying is when you have a political system as broken as ours and you cannot escape that ultimate reality of neoliberalism and austerity policy, at that point, immigration does become a huge problem. It's becoming right. a huge problem in blue cities and blue states now where right. everybody is forced in the Democratic Party to basically admit that they cannot, whether they want to or not, they cannot stray too far from Trump's policies here because they're unwilling to confront the underlying problems that undergird those policies and that ultimately, and here's the part no one wants to say out loud, that ultimately make those policies necessary, necessary. Right. And I'm not right. saying they're necessary for good reason. Please don't confuse what I'm saying. They're, they're necessary for bad reasons. But if you're not willing to challenge the reasoning behind these border policies, guess what? There ain't no way to change the border policies. That's just a fact. Well, well, and this this is where I think the left really loses people and particularly loses labor and the working class. Um, the left wants to pretend that having millions and millions of desperate immigrants coming into the country has no effect on industries, has no effect on wages, has no effect on job availability. Um, and that's just not true. I mean, I, I was in an industry where uncontrolled immigrant labor destroyed the uh, the financial uh, compensation in that industry. You talk to anyone in construction, you know, I mean, it used to be like a really good job and that drove down wages a lot. So at that point, you have to ask yourself, why doesn't this problem get fixed? Well, it's not really in the interest of corporate power and the ownership class to fix this problem, is it? It puts downward pressure on wages. Now, you can say that without hating immigrants or thinking they're terrible for trying to come and make money for their family. You know, you, you can hold these two ideas in your mind at the same time. Like, you don't have to be a virulent racist to acknowledge the reality of the downward pressure that that kind of uncontrolled, unmanaged uh, immigration has on the labor pool. And look at what we were saying just in terms of my experience coming back to the United States at the beginning of the show. Because the United States is run like the Hunger Games, when you, you, you don't even have the infrastructure set up to take care of the people who are already here. Of course, you bring in millions of desperate people. It just turns up the heat on the Hunger Games, which right. creates all of this backlash and resentment against immigrants, which let me be clear, they do not in any way deserve. And anybody who's saying, well, you want to fix this, you should fix our foreign policy. You're 100% correct. But in the end, that doesn't really make a difference to the low wage worker. And that low wage worker is not necessarily white. If you look at who the sector in society is based on polling, um, I've shown this article before. It was a more general article about people's political attitudes. The group in America that is most antagonistic to illegal immigration are black men. Right. 
Well, that's not very surprising, is it? Because whose jobs are most threatened, right? Right. Um, so, you know, they try to present this as a white supremacist issue, as a, as a racial issue. It's an economic issue. And I don't think, I think particularly as leftists, we should recognize that the same overlords that were always willing to attack on every other subject, um, they're not against allowing millions of undocumented immigrants into the country. They're very much for it. Because uh, as I'm sure you have noticed, what those people want, they tend to get. If they didn't want this, this problem would have been fixed a long time ago. Please clap. <laughs> 